Hey guys, how's it going? It's 8-Bit Eric. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to check out Ghostbusters for the Nintendo Switch. I'm wearing my special Ghostbusters shirt, by the way. But anyways, I did not get to play this Ghostbusters video game when it first came out. I know I quite often say that a lot of times when it comes to games that are ported over to the Nintendo Switch. But at the time, when this game first came out, I didn't have a PS3 or an Xbox 360. I just had a plain old Wii and the Wii got the inferior version to this game in fact it didn't look anything half as cool as what this game does now what this is is this is a remastering of that original game that came out the storyline is essentially what would have been Ghostbusters 3 it's written by Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis rest in peace Harold and it has you on an adventure basically that uh, continues off where the Ghostbuster 2 movie left off. There's references to previous movies and stuff throughout the series. It's, it's basically a love letter to fans, for the fans, by the people who made Ghostbusters. And it's everything that a third sequel should have been. There's a lot of cutscenes, cut a lot of voice acting by the original actors of the Ghostbusters series. All of them right here. You play as a rookie that gets recruited into the Ghostbusters as you uh, track down and visit for former locations in the movies like, you know, like the, the big hotel, the library, and you even get to visit new areas like different dimensions and stuff. You face old enemies like the librarian from the movie. And it's actually a lot of fun and very cool. So you play as a recruit. You go on these missions with the Ghostbusters that can, you know, they basically act as artificial intelligent partners with you while you're in these levels. Now you gain different abilities and stuff to use with your proton pack. So you have the traditional tractor beam from the proton pack that's used to snare ghosts and put them into traps. Then you get upgrades, like a upgrade that does like slime, upgrade that does like some blue shockwave, and so on. So as you continue, um, Egon gives you different power-ups and stuff to help you be able to solve some of like the levels, obstacles, and stuff. There's not too much in way of platforming or even puzzle solving in this game, but there is some sections that get pretty tricky and difficult. Overall, the ghosts are kind of neat. There's creative enemies like books that turn into golems and flying books and uh, opera ghosts and different types of ghosts that you encounter in the levels. But for the most part, the attacking and everything, you aim at them, you weaken them up enough to where you can slam them around and then you trap them. You trap them, you zap them, trap them, and uh, I don't even know what the motto is, but it's a lot of references and stuff to the series and stuff. I, I honestly rather much enjoyed it. You know, I got captivated in just how true to the series that this was and just how, you know, watching the story and watching the cutscenes and seeing, you know, these voice actors playing these characters again brought a lot of nostalgia to me. But I will say this game has a high degree of difficulty in it, especially the library boss. You know, the library stage in itself is humongous. It's a very long stage. It takes quite a long time to get through. And then when you finally get to the end and you get to this big boss, it's like a huge book boss with a mask. Ooh, oh my gosh. Talk about how many times I've died just trying to play that stage. So your your partners, your fellow Ghostbusters can revive you. And as long as one of y'all are alive, you're able to stay alive. But if everybody dies, the mission fails. And in that segment, the mission failed so many times. <laughs> I was like, wow. So how does the Switch version perform? Well, I think there are a little bit of hiccups. If I'm going to be completely honest, there were times where when I was in the middle of a stage and obviously a, a transition or a cutscene had to happen, the game would just kind of glitch out and stall and nothing would happen. Like, for example, the Times Square stage when you're uh, fighting Stay Puft Marshmallow, there's a part where the Ecto-1 gets trapped and there's an alley that's blocked off by a whole bunch of, like, Stay Puft Marshmallow. You're supposed to get an ability after going through, like, the laundromat and then you, like, kind of blast the alleyway to clear it open. The Ecto-1 would not move at all. I stood there for like 10 minutes trying to figure out how to trigger it. It would not happen. I had to restart it. Then there was another segment in one of the other stages in the library, I believe. There's like a sub-basement room where you fight two blue twin ghosts. Uh, I destroyed them and then the door wouldn't open. So I did encounter a few glitches. Uh, but once I kind of like restarted from the checkpoint, 
the game worked out fine. So there was a little bit of concern right there and as far as that. Now the graphics, of course, is it based on a game that's like 10 years old. It's been slightly remastered enough to look decent. But don't come in expecting the graphics to look on par. You know, the, the mouth of the characters when they talk might look a slightly uh, bit off. The eyes also look kind of odd and stuff. It's an older game. You're going to run into some light uh, graphical errors and stuff like that. But I still think it looks pretty fun. The voice acting's on par. The gameplay is as simple as it gets. It's everything that you would want in a Ghostbusters game. You know, it's leap, it leaps and bounds above the Wii version, if that's any consolation. But the Switch version looks and performs okay, just with those slight little glitch problems and stuff. It's not a full-price title, thankfully. It's out digitally and physically for the Nintendo Switch. It's also on PS4 and Xbox, so you want to play on those as well. But I only reviewed the Switch version, of course, because that's the only version that I got. Uh, but overall, I was pretty happy with the game and everything like that. I just wish I didn't miss out on playing it when it first initially came out because I've heard tons and tons of great things about this game and uh, finally getting to play it after so long, it's kind of bittersweet because it's like, man, why did I take so long to check this game out? I, I, I am happy to say that it was every bit as good as people have said and stuff like that. The Switch version, again, when it comes to games like this, people's main concerns are, how do they run? Are they frame rate spotty? Are they glitchy? Does it look okay? I guess, you know, it's up on par with at least what you would expect for a Nintendo Switch game. Nothing looked too bad. Nothing was alarming with the frame rate and stuff. Again, my biggest concern was just the frame rate issues on some of the transitions or the glitches, I mean, where the game wouldn't like load into the next segment or whatever. But overall, once I restarted, reloaded it, it seemed all right. And, and you know, I'm a big Ghostbusters fan, so getting to experience this game for the first time was a real treat. So I think it's worth checking out, especially because it's not a full $60 retail game. You can get a copy of this game. Uh, I think it's GameStop exclusive in the United States. So if you want to get it physically, check it out there. And that's it for today's video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace out. Consider supporting 8-Bit Eric on Patreon for just a dollar a month. Link below in the description. You want to become part of the hashtag 8BE Nation, guys? Well, be sure to pick up your official merch now available online. Link is below in the description. We got classic t-shirts, tank tops, hoodies, and even women's apparel. Don't forget, pick up your official merch now. And while you're at it, guys, feel free to watch the next video or why don't you catch up on one that you might have previously missed. Thanks again, guys, for all the support. I couldn't do this without you. You guys are amazing. And don't forget to subscribe and click that like button if you are brand new. Thanks again, guys. Peace out.